Good evening and welcome to the special Vote 2014 edition of Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Tonight's show is a debate sponsored by Clean Elections. We'll hear from candidates competing for two open seats on the Arizona Corporation Commission. As with all of Arizona Horizon's debates, this is not a formal exercise. It's an open exchange of ideas, an opportunity for give and take between candidates for one of the state's most important offices. As such, interjections and even interruptions are allowed, provided that all sides get a fair shake and we will do our best to see that that happens. The Arizona Corporation Commission is mostly known for its regulating authority over public utilities, but the Commission's responsibilities also include judicial, executive, and lawmaking authority. Two Republicans and two Democrats are competing for the two open seats on the Commission. The candidates are in alphabetical order. Republican state lawmaker Tom Faris, Democrat Jim Hallway, a member of the Central Arizona Water Conservation District Board. Democrat Sandra Kennedy, a former member of the Corporation Commission. And Republican Doug Little, who has worked in the computer software industry. Each candidate will have one minute for opening and closing statements. Earlier, we drew numbers to see who goes first, and that honor goes to Doug Little. Good evening, everyone. My name is Doug Little. I'm a Republican candidate for the Arizona Corporation Commission. I spent 30 years in the computer software industry, and 15 years of that time I spent working directly with energy and power generation companies. So I have some direct experience with the primary functions that the corporation commissioners would, would work with. Uh, been here in Arizona for 16 years, uh, married. My lovely wife, Linda, works for Clear Channel Communications, and my daughter, Michaela, recently graduated from ASU. She'll be 25 on the 25th of this, this month. Right. I'm running with Tom Faris. Tom and I are running together as a team. We're running on a platform of clean, reliable energy at the lowest possible price, and we hope to achieve that with a balanced energy portfolio. All right. Thank you very much. Our next opening statement now, we turn to Tom Faris. Hi, my name is Tom Faris. I'm married to Casey Faris and Chandler with four children, uh, Jack, Maddie, Tommy, and Allie. Uh, love living in Arizona. I'm the CEO of a small education services company in Mesa. I have served in the legislature for the last four years. I currently uh, serve as the chairman of commerce and the chairman of the international affairs ad hoc. Uh, I'm running for the corporation commission because I believe this is a tremendous opportunity to move Arizona in the right direction. I, th I believe in Arizona. I think Arizona should be the capital of the Southwest. And working with uh, Doug Little, I believe that this evening we'll be able to show why we're the right candidates for the office. All right, thank you very much. Sandra Kennedy now with our next opening statement. Good evening and thank you. My name is Sandra Kennedy and I want to return to the Arizona Corporation Commission to be your consumer advocate. I am uniquely qualified. I have the experience, the knowledge, and the, the, the uh, ability to tackle the tough issues. During my tenure at the commission, we, we created nearly 10,000 solar clean jobs. I want to return to the commission to do the same. Those 10,000 jobs that we created, the, the uh, utility companies don't even come close to the 10,000 jobs. I want to be your consumer advocate. Please return me to the Arizona Corporation Commission. You can find me at RestoreSolar.com. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. With our final opening statement, we turn to Jim Hallway. Thank you very much. So I'm running for the Corporation Commission because we need to move Arizona forward. And I have the skills, the experience, and the commitment to work with all of you and to make that happen. I have over 35 years of experience working on the most pressing challenges that face our state. And I served for a decade as the assistant director of your Department of Water Resources. I was the first professor of practice when they were starting the sustainability programs at ASU. And I was elected in 2010 to the Central Arizona Project Board of Directors. The commission is critical uh, to Arizona. It's critical to the water and energy and economic development issues that we face as a state. And I look forward to a rigorous discussion this evening with the rest of our candidates. However, for our state to make smart decisions, we need our commission to be independent. We need it to represent Arizona citizens and Arizona ratepayers, but over two million has been spent in this election to elect utility supported candidates. We need to get back to an independent commission and I look for your support to do that. All right, very good, thank you very much. Let's get it started here. Doug, are Arizonans paying too much? 
for utilities? Actually, you know, Ted, Arizonans pay some of the lowest rates for electricity in the United States. We have an average rate that runs around 12 and a half cents average between summer and winter because the rates are slightly different. But we, we actually have very low rates and one of the ways we've been able to achieve that is through using the most cost effective power generation resources out there. Sandra, you think we're, we're uh, doing okay with rates? Well, uh, I think that when you have a commission who allows between 22% and 133% rate increases, we have a problem. We have people on fixed income, low income, and sometimes no income. And especially our seniors have to decide, you know, what do we want to, uh, what do we want to pay? Do we want to pay our utility bill or do we want to get our medication that will last us for a month? So what do you think, Tom? Too much or we're doing pretty well? Well, compared to other states, we're doing well. But I want to bring up an important point here. Uh, old um, philosophy saying that every virtue lies between two vices. Okay, on one hand, you have the price. On the other hand, you have the quality and you have the reliability. And so the job of a commissioner is to make sure that these two things are balanced. And I'll give you an example. As we've been around the state and talking to ratepayers, a lot of ratepayers have said we want a commitment one way or the other on this or that. What we've tried to do, and I think it's critical that commissioners do this, is to offer transparency into the process and to show them exactly what goes into it. Because surely, if there was no water, or if the water was uh, undrinkable, you would have an equal outcry. And so it's the job of the commissioners to balance these two points. Are Arizonans paying too much for utilities? In general, no, but they're highly variable. So as was pointed out, we have some of the lowest power rates in the country in many areas, but if you look some areas to water and sewer rates, we have some particularly retirement communities with extremely high uh, wastewater sewage treatment rates. So it, it's, it depends. It depends where you are. And the, the job of the commission is to find that balance. You know, we, we gave these users monopoly, and now we need the commission to find the balance in those rates. Is the commission finding balance now? I think they can do a better job on finding balance both today and looking into the future as to how we keep rates low and make responsible decisions. You know, I, I think we're missing a point here, though, and this is one of the challenges that I think is going to face the commission over the next five years. We're starting to encounter aging water infrastructures. Some of the communities that were built early on are starting to actually show their, their age. And these infrastructures, in order to maintain reliability, to maintain clean, safe water supply, these infrastructure improvements have to be made. The other thing that we haven't considered, and, and one of the reasons that some of these increases have been very significant, as Sandra's talking about, it's because of EPA mandates. For example, EPA came out with some very new and, and restrictive standards for the amount of arsenic that can be in the water. Now, this has this this arsenic's been in the water a really, really long time, and certainly we want to make sure that it's clean and pure, and we don't want arsenic levels in the water. But at the same time, in order to meet those mandates, we have to spend the money on the infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure problem, especially by way of federal mandate. The EPA rules have been around for for a while now. Um, I think the commission has a job to basically look at the rates that. Uh, the individuals are paying, our companies are offering, or in their rate uh, cases. To me, when a company comes and says, uh, we want a 133% rate increase, boy, I just, I, I think that it's just far outreach for a company to come and ask for a rate increase that high. So I think looking at President Obama's policies on energy, <clears throat> the overreach of the EPA, Arizona has a serious problem moving forward. What the EPA is doing will result in higher prices for Arizonans. And those higher prices are largely going to be on the laps of the future commissioners, whoever the commissioner should be at this table. I was very pleased to see both the Republican and the Democratic uh, candidates for attorney general come out and say that they would sue the EPA if they represented Arizona. You know, if I could for one moment, because you talk about Obama and the EPA, the rules came in 1990 under the Bush administration. And, you know, now we're seeing the effects. You've got to make the changes. We can't keep, you know, drawing it out saying we're not going to do it. We've got to do it now, and I'm glad to see that we're moving in that direction. Can I put a human face on this? Please. A week ago, APS announced the closure 
of or the early closure of one of the units of the three units up at the Choya plant. Choya is up in Joseph City, Arizona, which is in a small little town about 80 miles east of Florence. It's a town of 1,500 people. This closure is a direct result of some EPA mandates that have very recently come down. That community receives $29 million a year in their, into their economy for the power plant and employs almost 250 people. When they start closing plants because of EPA mandates that cost $350 million to implement that don't result in any significant reduction in emissions, it's coming at a price that, that Arizonans are really paying a, a, a dear price for. Jim, thoughts on this? Yeah, I, one of our key challenges here is we are going to continue to see environmental regulations. And, and I believe they, they come in fits and starts. They get stronger, they get weaker. But there is a progression of we want to have a clean environment. I, we have made major investments in coal. I believe we can continue to use those investments. But coal does create pollution issues that we need to deal with as a state. At the same time we're continuing to use our coal, this is one of the reasons we want to start to advance a solar economy. In many of these same communities, they have some of the best solar and some of the best wind resources in the state. So let's maintain the coal economy while we start to build a solar economy, and then we have a robust future. Last word on this. And, you know, some of the things that Jim is saying, I really agree with, and it's a, a split from this party. Uh, I, I mean, I have to make sure we point out again, these aggressive policies from the EPA impact Arizonans, not the, just the Arizonans here in Phoenix, not just Maricopa, what the rurals call the great state of Maricopa. The co-ops derive the vast majority of, from, the, the, from their, uh, their power from uh, coal, from clean coal, and it's going to drastically increase their rates. So it has a big impact on, on Arizonans. But it let's, is disproportionate on the rurals. And let's, let's uh, change gears here. Uh, Sandra, is APS paying uh, too much for power sold back to the grid? I think they're not paying enough. Uh, I would really like to see, and we're talking about net metering. Yes, we are. Uh, net metering uh, was a rule that the a ACC uh, promulgated back in um, when I was on the commission. Um, APS and other stakeholders came to the table, helped put those rules together. Well, after I left the commission, APS, I don't know, out of the sky, said that people weren't paying their fair share who had solar. So they wanted 50 to to $100 in addition to what the individuals were paying. You know, even APS's own uh, witness stated, you know, we're already getting this fee through the transmission line fee that's on everyone's bill. I'm not really sure why APS was in the game to do that. I'm not sure why they didn't wait until uh, their rate case. What do you think, Doug? Is, is APS paying too much? Well, here's the thing. In it, this whole question of net metering really needs to be discussed in the context of a rate case because that's an evidentiary hearing. It's sworn testimony. Everybody has an opportunity to provide input, all the different interveners, all the different stakeholders. Uh, I think what the commission wanted to do in the decision they made last November was they wanted to do two things. One, they wanted to acknowledge that there is a cost shift associated with residential rooftop solar installations to non-solar customers. And I think the other thing they wanted to do was essentially put a, a, a piece of, of rulemaking in place to at least start to address this cost shift. But the, the true correct amount, as Sandra was saying, you know, is something that we probably do need to look at in the context of race. So you're saying it's possible that APS is paying too much for that power back to the grid? You know, here's the other thing, Ted. There are other mechanisms besides net metering for, for addressing this cost shift. Okay. And, and I think that's what we might want to look at. Are there other creative solutions that we can use to address the cost shift without penalizing rooftop solar customers? And Ted, what I would add here is what we need is a good study. I mean, what I, what I fault the commission for is they made it, the job of the commission is to make a decision based on the evidence in front of them. Well, they had no facts in front of them. They had a highly biased study from APS. They had a highly biased study from the solar industry. We need an independent study that looks at the cost, the impacts, the rate impacts of multiple sources of power and then make that decision. The other fault I'd have is when they made the decision without really knowing if we have a transfer of cost or not, they also said, well, we're going to make it basically 70 cents a kilowatt today, but we can change it anytime we want. And as an investor, there's nothing you hate more than uncertainty. So I don't know whether to invest now because I don't know what the rules are going to be. And what the public deserves 
is for folks that disagree to sit down, to hash things out, and come to a resolution that makes sense for everyone. And that's really not what was done there. And from, from that final ruling, things were worse on both sides, and it should have been done in a rate case. That's how you get the best result. And also, I, I imagine you were eventually going to ask me that question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, mean, I don't think we have enough information to make a call on that yet. That was the problem with the whole thing. So I, I think serving in the legislature for four years, I've seen a number of turf wars where you have folks on either side coming out saying, you know, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. There's always a solution that makes sense for everyone, but it's putting the ratepayer, the taxpayer first. So the corporation did not necessarily do the right thing. I, I would have much rather seen it done in a rate case. Uh, as far as solar firms paying taxes, on leased panels. What are your thoughts? I'm not in favor of it. Um, I think it is a ploy that APS has pushed um, the Department of Revenue to go after individuals. It is a ploy to keep them from going solar. And um, it hasn't worked so far, but um, I'm really hoping that the legislature takes up the issue as they were going to take the issue up last year, but it was blocked. Are you saying that APS, with this move, is trying to either stall or eliminate the progress of solar? Oh, absolutely. I think that they, they have their, their fingerprints is all over it. What do you think? Well, first of all, going back to the primary debate, I, I had a nuanced response. I'm going to be less nuanced this time. I am not in favor of what DOR has done to pass the costs along to lease solar customers. Uh, I understand that business property is taxed in other areas, but this is one where I think we need to back away from it. Do you, do you think this is part of an APS plan to Absolutely stall not. or eliminate Absolutely solar? Absolutely not. This is something that DOR basically figured out on their own, I believe. And I agree with Sandra. I think if there's some discussion about whether or not this is appropriate, the proper place for that discussion is in the legislature. It's not at the commission. Commission has no, no control over what DOR does. Jim, what say you? Well, I, first, I'm glad to see that Doug's come around to Sanders in my position that we shouldn't have this tax there. Two concerns about it. One is we are trying to create an incentive to expand the solar industry, and this runs against that very strongly. This will be even more expensive than the other fees we've talked about. Second, if you own your system, you don't pay the tax. If you lease your system, you do. 70 to 80 percent of people in Arizona lease them, and that's going to be our lower income customers. So we're giving a benefit to the wealthier that we aren't giving to the lower income, and that, I think, is inappropriate. Is this, again, an attempt by APS to stall or eventually somehow uh, keep solar from advancing? I don't think so. Not a ploy? I don't think so. And, you know, I said before when we, t we brought up this issue in the primary debate, uh, I have concerns with it. And the timing of it was my biggest concern. Again, solar is a wonderfully disruptive technology. It's in its infancy. Jeff Bezos said of technology that we're in, in terms of it being a day, we're lying in bed and the alarm clock hasn't gone off yet. Same thing can be said for solar. What we will see in our lifetime with solar technology is going to be amazing. So the timing of it is crucial. Uh, I've talked to the folks at DOR and I think that there are concerns there, but the timing of it, I don't want to see solar go through this right now. I guess Ted, really quickly, as clearly APS is trying to limit the rooftop solar industry. They see it as competition with their bottom line. Their own financial advisors are telling them if the rooftop solar industry expands, your, your worthiness as a company is going to be depreciated some. So clearly they are concerned about it. They spent millions of dollars to try to stop it. That's one of the things we need to have a more open conversation about. Uh, Doug, uh, utilities regulated by the Corporation Commission, should those utilities regulated by the Commission be allowed to use ratepayer rates, ratepayer uh, money, funds uh, for ads promoting candidates and promoting issues? Well, let's be clear about something. The, and this is the case with all utilities, ratepayer money does not get used for that purpose. That is not something that the companies are allowed to do. But the companies that are providing these services, in many cases, are investor-owned companies. In other words, APS is a wholly owned subsidiary of Pinnacle West. Pinnacle West is a company. And what Pinnacle West decides to do with profits that they might make is up to them. It's up but, to them, but is it a good thing for the Arizona ratepayer to have well, them involved with candidates and issues? First of all, if you're 
I, th I think what you're alluding to is some of the stuff that talks about the fact that APS essentially has bought the election for Tom and I. Uh, that's absolutely not the case. You know that's uh, not the case. I don't know what APS's involvement has been, but what I do know, what I do know as a result of spending a lot of time on the campaign trail, 15 counties we've campaigned in, uh, we have the broad support of the business community, we have the broad support of many consumers, and from my perspective, I look at it as our message has broad support across a lot of the constituencies out there, so it's not just the utilities. The answer to your question is absolutely not, but APS has not been definitely, they have not come out and said, we are not putting money into that race. They have not said that. So, you know, we, we talk about what APS, it's an integrity issue. And what I would like to see as a commission, and I'm wondering why the current commission hasn't done this. Why haven't they called APS in? Why haven't they called the uh, CEO in and say, hey, kind of tell us what's going on. Are your rate payers going to pay for all the money you've put out? Should, do you think, should APS be compelled Absolutely. to show those things? Absolutely. I, I've written several letters to the commission saying, commission, you could order this tomorrow. And in fact, not just the commission. Individual commissioners have subpoena power. We only need one commissioner to say, I want to see this information. So, you know, we, to some degree, we respect the law of the land. They can make a contribution. But if they are making a contribution in an attempt to buy the election of their regulators, that needs to be publicly known. Should the commission be ordered, uh, should order APS the commission not to should donate order. to candidates or issues? I don't know that they have that authority. That's a, that's a touchier issue. I think it's worth talking about. Personally, I don't think they should. And in the past, they hadn't. APS, all the other utilities had a policy of we will not make contributions. Right. They've changed that. They've clearly changed it. And we should go back to that. Yeah, but the idea that it's impossible that we have broad support is insulting. The idea that we could be bought is insulting. Okay, I'm calling you out on it. Well, it's Tom, in stop. I'm you talking. Heard, you you to call out the Hold on. Let, let, no, let no. him finish. I'm, let I'm, him finish. It's insulting. I think we have broad support. I don't have a problem with asking them to show who it is. I look forward to that information more than anybody else does. I believe it's broad support. I believe that if we have a message of balance, we have a message of responsibility, and that resonates with a lot of folks, not just the business community, the ratepayers. All right. What we need to call out is APS. I mean, I'm not saying anything about my opposition candidates, but clearly the money's been put in. The money helped buy the primary election. It's given an enormous benefit. It's 10 times the money the candidates themselves had. This shouldn't have happened. You say it's insulting, but should there not be concern among ratepayers that people that are going to be regulating that utility might be getting money, whether they know it or not, from the utility? I'm the beneficiary of that spending, and I have concerns about it. Sandra, what do you think? I think my two opponents could call APS out and say, hey, what are you doing? Call them out and say, stop it. But they haven't done that. That's, that's coordination. That's illegal. Last word, final word. You know, Tom and I have run a, our own campaign. We focused on our own campaign effort. We focused on what I think is a message that resonates with the ratepayers. It resonates with the business community. Um, if you look at the fact that we have received endorsements from business and, and consumer organizations up and down the line, most recent being the endorsement of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry last week. And what that tells me is that we have very broad support across the business and the ratepayer community. Okay, we have to stop it right there. Each candidate will now give a one-minute closing statement and going in reverse order of the opening remarks, we start with Jim Hallway. Ted, thank you, and it's a pleasure to have what's really our first candidate debate. I'm glad finally we've been able to get everyone to the table to do that. We need to talk about these issues more. I, I want to start with real briefly on the issues just raised. Clearly, this amount of money puts a cloud over the integrity and the independence of the commission, and that's why the commissioners should act. The fact that none of them will act, I think, says something about their fear of what an entity like APS with that amount of money could do to their own political futures. That's why it shouldn't happen. Briefly, I, what I'd love to do is, is continue these conversations and debates. And what I ask the viewers to do is you know, check out my website, hallway2014.com. We've got a lot of information. We've got 
detailed answers to questions that have come up during the election posted there. We've also recently put up a site called InnovateArizona.com. You can get there through that. And what we're looking to do is start a whole conversation about what can Arizona do to bring new ideas about innovation, get our economy going, get our state going, and get back on track. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Sandra Kennedy now with our next closing statement. Again, thank you for the opportunity to participate tonight. Clearly you can see who my opposition is. You can clearly see that they are the APS chosen candidates. I want to be your consumer advocate, return me to the commission. Analysts say that they are going to be good for APS's bottom line. I want to be good for your bottom line. I want to help you keep money in your pocket. A vote for Sandra Kennedy is a vote for you. Please return me to the Arizona Corporation Commission. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Tom Faris now with our next closing remark. I was grateful to be with you this evening. Uh, a little bit about my background and my family's background. My grandfather first came to this country as a teenager, uh, had no money, lived the American dream, was able to get a job in a steel mill, saved his money up, uh, put eight kids through college. Uh, bought a store and some property, and it's a great point of pride knowing that that sort of story can happen here in America. I believe that Arizona is the most American of the 50 states. We have 10 to 15,000 people who still move here every month looking for a similar dream and a similar opportunity. And I believe in Arizona. I think this is a great place for great opportunities. The Corporation Commission has a tremendous impact on that. I hope that you'll send me and Doug Little to the Corporation Commission to represent you. Thank you very much. And now Doug Little's closing statement. Thank you for watching this. This is an important discussion that unfortunately a lot of voters are not necessarily participating in. I want to just help you each understand why I'm sitting here, why I'm running for this office. A little over a year ago, I saw some things happening potentially happening in Arizona that would have tremendous negative effect on the Arizona consumers and Arizona ratepayers. I'm not a politician. I'm a citizen, just like some of you, most of you are. I'm doing this because I feel like the ratepayers in this state need a champion. They need somebody protecting them from out-of-state interests that would do things that would affect our economy in a very negative way. And I believe that by Using this platform that Tom and I have of clean, reliable energy using a balanced portfolio, we're going to make Arizona's economy better. And making that economy better is going to make life better for the ratepayers. So please support Tom and I in our race for the Arizona Corporation Commission. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, candidates, and thank you for watching this clean elections debate. That is it for now. I'm Ted Simons, and thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.